actual hunt horse is worth. And, um, you know, it's it's kind of hard to justify paying much more than half a million um, on the basis that they're essentially so fragile. And um, if, you, if you're ever involved in national hunt horses, if you ever get into ownership of national hunt horses, you'll just figure this out very quickly that um, injuries are such a problem and all that. Um, now, our Connor would have been sold for a huge amount of money um, when Barry Connell bought him. That didn't work out for him. But then you'd more recent examples of the likes of Envoy, Alain, and um, you know Malone Road, horses that Cheveley Park would have bought for huge money. And they, they again bought for a couple of horses for huge money recently. To buy a mare for that price... Um, it's a huge amount of money. The fact that she's in foal is is very significant. Um, first of all, it, it proves that she's fertile, and second of all, um, it, you know the the foal will probably be worth a nice bit of money. Um, so it's kind of bought with the view that she will produce a few foals and they will, um, you know, be 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 good horses. But I, I find now myself that you know these national these very good national hunt mares at the racetrack. There's absolutely no guarantee they'll guarantee to. There's no guarantee that it'll translate to their production of very good horses. Solarina was a brilliant mare, and she's been, you know, a mixed a mixed bag really at the at the, in terms of her breeding and a lot of kind of very ordinary horses. You, you think of um, Opera Hat as well, who like was an absolute flop at stud considering how good she was. Finally produced a winner in the shape of a good horse for Jessica Harrington quite belatedly, but um, there are various theories there about you know. Not, um, horses that race, whether why they don't necessarily always produce it. I think a lot of it is probably just genes. But you know, Apple's Jade will she will she be an unbelievable broodmare? You know, probably not because it's 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 kind of an outlier thing. But um, it's a lot of money. It's definitely a lot of money. But there'll be a lot of interest to see how um you know the fall does and it kind of um you, when you get these high profile sales like. Kevin Doyle buying the Camelot half brother to Altior as a foal. It's very exciting. I think it's good for racing because it makes people kind of take, uh, you know, that makes their eyes prick, maybe their ears prick, maybe if they weren't necessarily involved in racing. But it is a hell of a lot of money. Yeah. And so Apple Shade won the mayor's hurdle at Cheltenham. Is that right? Yeah, she's many words. I think she won 11, 11 uh, grade 11 ones. 11 grade ones. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, she was an incredible horse because obviously she she changed from Willie Mullins to Gordon Elliott, and that was one of those really high profile changes. She kind of had her off days, and um, you know, probably you'd, you'd wonder if sometimes it was shelter from her track. It probably wasn't. And um, she often jumped out to her right. She produced incredible performances at uh, Leopardstown as well. And um, she lost her way a bit towards the end, but she'd given her all. Uh, and now it'll be intriguing to see how she gets on at stud. But, yeah. Um, I guess it was the you know the the golf the golf sale was interesting because the the year has been you know among the most trying in in uh, in recent years or in recent decades for um, bloodstock because there are just so many things in the background you, you know Brexit was initially the big issue and then that was you know relegated to second place massively by the COVID pandemic and then you have the issue of owners not being able to go racing and um, doubts about prize money all these things it, it, it you know there were some jittery sales but the golf sale actually they were selling very well as evinced by this and is um sky ace the new apple's jade is sky ace the new apple's jade well uh i i'd prefer to have bought apples i'd prefer to have bought sky is for 600 quid than apples jade for 500 grand or whatever she costs being honest with you um well let me she, let me she ask couldn't be, she could be a mere win at cheltenham and if i were her owner i'd be very excited well we we have one of our owners with us call good afternoon to you i think it's good morning where you are is it or is it good evening no it's good evening here uh, how, how are you johnny how are you good how are you, how are you good. you're in abu dhabi good. I'm in Abu Dhabi, yeah. So I'm out here two and a half years now. So I'm teaching in a, a, a business in uh, Aldar School. In and here, Abu look, Dhabi, yeah. it's the obvious question, but what's the weather like? Uh, yeah, it's very nice. So from probably October until maybe uh, March, April, yeah, you're talking about mid 20s. So it's very nice. Nice. So you yeah. can go out and stroll around. There's no worry about air conditioning, all that kind of stuff. So all, all joking aside, the uh, the Sky Eye story is one of those other ridiculous fairy tale stories that 2020 has given us some. In racing, and this is the most the latest one. Um, you spent six hundred quid on a horse, and we're like, "Well, sure, look, what could go wrong?" Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So I I had been with Shark um, back in two thousand sixteen. We actually got a horse um, called Semidium, and it was actually uh, predominantly with Roscommon County players at the time. And uh, so that's where the original syndicate name called Bird in Hand came from. And uh, I just kept it then for so that obviously that horse was very good. One first time out for us. 
um, we had Rachel Blackmore um, claiming five pounds. So you know what, that was obviously a steal back in them days. And uh, so then two or three years came out here, kind of didn't get involved. I just got some notion to email uh, Shark about, I said, you're going to Ascot sales this week. And that's where we bought Smithium as well. And I said, do you have your eye on anything? And he goes, he sent me back an email with, uh, how are you call all this? Do you know the way Shark is? You know, very excited, <laughs> you know. Um, and uh, so he sent me on two horses. Hang on, hang uh, on. Most people don't know how Shark is. So how is he? What do you mean? Shark is, he's, uh, he's very giddy and he gets excited. And he's, yeah, he's a great crack for uh, a syndicate now. He is the ideal trainer for a syndicate. Right, um, okay. So, yeah, so he'd be bubbly and yeah, he's not afraid to you know, have the crack and all that. So he sent you back the email. Was Sky Ace on the email? Sky Ace was on the email and he said, I told him that I had about 10,000 to spend uh, between four other fellas um, at the time. And uh, three, two of them were out here along with me and one back home. And uh, he wrote back an email. He goes, Sky Ace could. I'm looking at him or looking at her actually. And, uh, but I don't think you'll get it for 10,000. And I said, all right. I said, he, he put another horse there as well that I don't think has ran since that day. And he, she was sold for, I think it could have been 25,000, the other horse he mentioned. <laughs> and I couldn't believe it. I was actually, we were at the, uh, Formula One out here, which is a great weekend down in Abbey Dabby. And we're watching the sales myself and uh, my mate, Kevin Crane from Wexford, he's involved in the horse. And both of us in the cubicle, in the toilets, looking to see the sale, how much we couldn't believe it that we got it for 600 pound. Yeah, just I did the race in post race at Tipperary Jar when this horse ran first time. And um, first of all, the switch from Willie Mullins to Shark Hannon, with all due respect to Shark, I was kind of wondering why is this horse left Willie Mullins? And then I did a cursory look at the sale and I saw the price and I was like, well, she clearly has lost at least two legs, if not three, because it just doesn't make sense. How did she sell for that? Why was Willie getting rid of her? What was what was the backstory to this fairy tale? So at the time it was, I think that the owner, um, I think he wanted like listed winners and the horse hadn't uh, performed and I presume like we thought as well, like we we're never going to have a horse win a maiden and we were like handicapping her and she might sneak in a handicap because if Willie Mullins can't get a horse to win a bumper, well then clearly she's not that good. Um, so when we went in, yeah, she, there was rumors that her shins were sore and whatnot and she didn't look great in the sales and Fair stuff like I that. Know. She, she'd run in three bumpers and she'd run very well. She'd actually finished third to dime a dozen who Shark, Shark trains. Gary Owens involved, the FBI is involved in that horse. Had finished second to Miss Connack, who's not a bad mare, had finished third to Majestic Maid. This is all rock solid form and then you go to the sales with the horse placed in three bumpers. <clears throat> yeah, she was convinced that she was a good horse because of the dime a dozen. He rates dime a dozen very highly. And uh, like Dime a Dozen would beat Sky Ace by 20 lengths and the gallops at home. Um, like we talk on to Tipperary that the horse had been training terrible. Um, we didn't think we'd get to three miles. We didn't think the ground. We didn't have a penny on the horse. And oh, so anyway, obviously we, we were hoping to have a few pounds, you know, on the horse, but one and Shark was like, well, we didn't expect that. She wasn't doing anything to the air at home. And it just snowballed. I actually think then one of her best performances was when she went to Gorn. Um, she made mm. all, and she beat some good, really good horses that day. Well, so, the, the, the Tipperary run, um, is. what's your feeling like after that race? I have been there myself where, um, I don't know if you've been there, Ger, where your horse has won, but you haven't had a penny on it. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, we had some uh, tough conversations, I suppose, at the time. But, um, yeah, we, you know, like, how, like, that was a, that was a very poor race in Tipperary. Uh, at the time, mm. um, I think this, I think the second we beat is only rated um, 95. Mm. And we were like, well, if she isn't really fit and she's not showing anything at home and if she's able to win a maiden hurdle over three miles on the bridle, well, do you know, do you know, we not have having something. a bet, we might, we might have something. Yeah. And then when she went on to win, then in Gorn, we were dreamland. We thought that this was the bee's knees, I suppose. Okay, so hang on a second. When is this? What, what, when are we talking about? When was the Tipperary race? Uh, Tipperary was July. So Ju it wasn't right. long after. was June, when... actually, and Scorn was July. Yeah, have them, have them. Yeah. This is uh, just, just after the return of racing as well, when your life changed mm. forever, Hall. When did you buy the yeah, horse, then? Say that again? When did you buy the horse? We bought the horse in November at the Ascot sales last okay. year. And, and didn't yeah. the, she hasn't run until Tipperary when racing came back, is that right? No, we basically put her out in the field and she turned inside out. Like, he sent me a picture, um, Shark, in, like, 
when he got her back in December. And then he sent me a picture like in the middle of April and you wouldn't even think bar the, the, the sparkle on her, um, the white dot on her forehead, you wouldn't know it was the same horse. How, what, what, how did she change? She just had filled out and she got so strong looking. Um, now she was a bit of a shell of a horse um, when we bought her at the sales. And I'd say that was a lot to do with why she went for 600 pound. Right, okay, so people just didn't like the look when they showed up on the day, they're like, nah, no thanks, not for me. Yeah, and a bit no of rest one even and... bid against them. He right. opened at 600 and yeah, that was it. Wow. Was there no reserve? Like, so the, did the owner kind of, was the owner, I suppose, flush enough that he or she wasn't that bothered about the reserve or how does that work? I, I don't know. I don't know. You'd expect that there would be a reserve, but yeah, no, we didn't. There was no reserve. I guess this, this is this is the strange thing about it. So, like, if you three examples come to mind of horses that um, most horses are, are essentially worth not that much because training fees cost a lot, and if the horse is relatively exposed, like the horse isn't really worth much because you have to pay the training fees, you have to pay transport, you have to pay all these things, and then the horse has to win. And if the horse wins, you have to give twenty percent away to the trainer and the jockey, pretty much. But if you have a horse, we'll say that. It hasn't run like skeptical. Skeptical was sold for something like two and a half grand. Geological was sold for less than a grand, despite having good form. And the strange thing that can happen is that um, there might be a little bit of a rumor around the sales, and everyone just goes off the horse. Now, the horse might be a risky purchase, but if everyone goes off the horse and you're paying, you're basically buying it for a song, as they say, you have a chance of this happening. And this is why after three races, there's still that chance that she might be very good. Yeah, we were we were certain that we were going to win a handicap with her down the line. We didn't think we were going to win a maiden. We didn't think we were going to win a novice, and we definitely didn't think we were going to win listed races. Uh, we were just thinking about getting her fit, um, getting it, you know, your handicap mark, and then trying to have a touch. Maybe we'd like the dream was the reason we got it in November was we all get we're off during the summer over in Abu Dhabi. And we're going to be home, and you know that we're going to be able to go race with Sky Yes. So like maybe you might get to a Galway or something. Yeah, so that was that was the dream. Like we looked at the horse, and she was um, second or third in gold in that bumper to behind Majestic Maid, and mm. uh, so yeah, so we were like, she handles Galway. Um, if we get her into a you know a nice weight off um, in a handicap there, you know we, we know she handles the track, and that was basically the plan in November was to get a horse that we could go to Galway. Right. And, we're home for and now you're going to Cheltenham. Yeah. Yeah, Cheltenham is definitely on the cards now, yeah. That's mad. So take us back, right, Tipperary, was it the big price in Tipperary that you missed? Uh, so she actually opened up at 4-1, to one, and there was a favourite for Chiggenstown that was like 8-13. to 13. I think it was short, very short, and we were like, all right, no point. It drifted out to, I think, 15-2, to two, and the favourite pulled up, and we, yeah, we won the bridle. Then the next day, she went to Gorn, and she was 10-1. to one. I know we had a few pound on her that day now, so I met up for the first day. Um, so, uh, yeah, so 10 to 1. And then after that, then, like, we were having a few pound on her every day. Um, she, like, there was there maybe two or three races where um, she didn't just produce it on the day, but she, you know, since then, everything's been great. Well, so, and, and what's that like? Because at that point, you're thinking, okay, this is a good horse, but not a, not a, when does the greatness start to come into the, the equation? Is it down royal first? <laughs> No, so like we thought we got to the bottom of her, like we had one or two races. So I'd always say if you can get a horse to win two races, you kind of pay for your year in terms of their training fees and the whole lot. And uh, so we got her two wins. Then we came second to um, a Willie Mullins machine. Um, he hasn't been seen since, but he beat us down in the list all by oh, so. 42 lengths. Yeah, hasn't been seen since, I don't think. And uh, we were delighted We because we... You know, there was very heavy ground and we were up there with the pace and uh, he destroyed everyone in that field. And then we went in for a handicap down in uh, Bellustown uh, or Ballinrobe. And we thought we were well in at one, I think it was one, two, seven. And uh, yeah, we ran very well uh, for a long way, but just faded off the last maybe four or five hurdles and she finished down the field in the end. But we were happy enough. And uh, yeah, the lad, there was only one run that she didn't run a race, and that was on really uh, good ground down in Killarney. Uh, the actual races were called off because the round was like after two races, but she had sore shins and she knew that she like she wasn't able to jump them hurdles at all. Like she was uh, as she was jumping them, like she was bouncing off the ground and never travelled the yard at all that day. Okay, so she obviously likes bottomless ground essentially. No, no. So yielding to good to yielding is her best ground. Good to yielding, yeah. Um, okay. But firm ground, she can't go on. Okay, and I suppose that's the stuff that you learn, and that's why you, a, mm. a horse like this, that's why you run them in loads of different circumstances to try and build up that 
that information. And then when does the kind of the next, when does she click into that next gear where it's like, hang on a second here? Yeah, so we were going, we were like, we we're going to go for one last run in, in um, October, November, and we had given the horse a break. And I was, um, I'm not sure, you know, uh, Brian Keenan, um, he's a bookmaker there that's on track. And uh, the he's of the game. Yeah, yeah. He suggested to me to try and get black tied, and he sent me um, a couple of uh, the ratings of horses that came second and third in that race over the previous years. And I said it to Shark, and Shark agreed 100%. He was thinking about the same race, and we said we've nothing to lose. We'll ride out the back, and we'll try and nick black type, and we'd have our two races won. We'd have our second in the stall, and we'd have our black type year one completed. And, uh, yeah, the rest is history. She picked off um, you know, really good horses there in that down oil race, and, you know, she uh, she got up at 66-1. It was one of them strange races as well in that um, you were kind of riding to come third or fourth if you could. The race developed ahead of you where they basically took each other on. It was a really interesting race to watch. Fell into your lap and... Sorry, I'm choking. A 66 to 1. Mm. 66, yeah. So the three times she's won has been uh, 15 to 2, or the four times, sorry, uh, 15 to 2, 10 to 1, 66 to 1 and 28 to 1. Why was she so, 66 to 1? What was that? Her form, she hadn't done anything in four or five races effectively nice. on the form book chart. Yeah, and she had fell in the previous race, but actually she was quite, she was travelling okay that race, and we thought that she was beginning to come back to a bit of form, and we took something from that. Um, it was a three mile on soft ground, and we had that excellent um, apprentice there, Simon Torrance on him, and uh, he got off, and he said it's Shark after the race. He goes, after like, Two miles, he thought it was he was going to win. It was how much, how far was, she was going to win by, and she just emptied out with the three miles in that bottomless round. Right. So we knew that we had something there that there was some ability coming back. Okay, so that's that's in um, is it, is it Dan Royal or Dan Patrick? Sorry. No, that's back in Tipperary. That's Tipperary. That's Tipperary. Okay, yeah. and and um, after that, you start getting to the point where so after the black type, it's like okay, well, what you know, because you. It, it's not year done. It's like, well, let's go. Let's see what the rest of the year has for us. Yeah, so in fairness, Shark picked out this race again. And uh, so we said there's a race in uh, Punchtown. We'll be giving lumps away to de decent animals, but we've no other targets to go. Um, we got a rating of 130. So that would have, like, you know, handicaps were probably a bit high. Um, so we pinpointed this race for um, uh, Punchtown. And ideal, like, two mile four, two mile three is our key trip like she stays uh, so we were we weren't really concerned about giving the weight and i actually felt if you took willie mullins horses out that had the reputation that the down royal race was actually better than the one in punchestown right so we were quietly confident yeah no we backed her i actually backed her 66 to 1 and i backed her at uh, yeah, 28 to 1 the last day I think we've had we've called on the wrong week to be honest. Should have had him on last week, <laughs> but you know, yeah. it is what it, just to, just to show how lucky you are though. Um, and this is like you're kind of like you've you've won three lotters at this stage. They call off racing after the following race because it's too foggy. Uh, mm, yeah, no, it's amazing. Yeah, I actually had a, another syndicate horse that I'm running running in the second last race, and uh, yes, he couldn't run that day. So um, yeah, we were just everything was yeah, we were blessed on the day. Um, so it was really like I'd say we can thank the Grade One race being on that day that they actually tried to get the race and then proceed and mm. pursued with it. Absolutely. I want to show everybody uh, at home a video that um, some one of your friends tweeted us this, uh, but it, it disappeared very quickly from the internet. But you were a good sport and you given it back to us. <laughs> so uh, yeah. talk to us a little bit about this. This is obviously you in Abu Dhabi watching the race on the phone. Yeah. So uh, Victor's Bar, which is the sponsor of the Nafina Football Club out here, and uh, yeah, we're watching it on the phone and sure. I don't know whether you know about the, the brunches out in Abu Dhabi, but someone thinks that it's a good idea to start at uh, 12 o'clock in the day, so we'll just have us in the evening. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, we got a bit excited, and, uh, yeah, sure, the rest is history. Bottomless mimosas. <laughs> is that yeah, the, yeah, yeah. That's the security guard who comes over to say, to tell you to calm down, and, and uh, you're Oh, yeah, them. because it's, like, it's four to a table out here, and there's massive fines for breaking the rules for the bars out here and the restaurants, and obviously me jumping around like a lunatic wasn't part of the protocol that they have there, I think. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, listen, uh, so that is the, uh, the Punchestown race, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, so there's a video that went viral earlier on in the year with um, 
two other lads, Kevin Crane and Carl Sutton, when she won in Goran Park, and that went viral. And then sure, my video then went. Uh, when I was getting a text there this week about it, that it's been forwarded too many times, I knew I was in better. <laughs> Ah, look, I think everybody's calming down. There's a vaccine coming, so... Um, yeah. I mean, obviously, this is beyond your wildest dreams. Johnny makes the comparison with winning three lotteries. Like, now you begin <coughs> to have, like, proper, serious mare's hurdle in Cheltenham dreams. Yeah, yeah. We actually, uh, we're on at 50 to 1 and 40 to 1. So, as in, after Down Royal Race, I couldn't believe that she was still 40 to 50 to 1. And uh, we were like... We had a few pounds on her, and uh, yeah, we think that like we'll sit her in behind in Cheltenham and let them go off hammer and tongs in front, and hopefully we can you know stay up that hill. You know, like two mile two would be probably ideal, but we think we get her. We think we get our ground there, which normally is wrong. You know, yielding ground, good yielding. So if we get that, we'll have every chance. I believe she's fourteen to one now for the rest. Right. I think it's it's a good it's a good idea it's a good kind of example, Jer, as well. That um, in the in the year that we've had, um, you might think that this is a good time now for me to buy that house that I was waiting to buy. And then you look at the house prices, and they haven't really gone down at all. But horse prices have gone down massively. Um, and I've I've countless stories of lads who sold horses for. Like a friend of mine bought a horse to the sales. I was figuring he'd make about 25 grand and he ended up selling them for seven or eight. And this is like not unusual because the market was so jittery and there still are bargains out there, particularly horses that have run and um, that have just been sold on because of those factors that I mentioned. And like the likes of Cottle's horse, the dream is actually, re you know, you can realize a dream at times in racing. Yeah, totally. Yeah, absolutely. And Shark is a, he's a great trainer for improving horses like that. He like he buys a lot of horses like that have been with other trainers previously, and like he's finding he's finding some amount of improvement at times with them. Like so, yeah, he's been really great. Like I want to mention him. Um, like he's very open down in his yard. Like we can like does she does a bit of work every Tuesday and Saturday and. Do you know, we go down or when well, lads that are there at home can go down and he'll have the tea and breakfast and he'll show them the whole run of the whole yard. So they get a great feel of like, what's it all been? And like, you know, what's it to be like to be like an owner? Like, so he's very welcome and yeah, he's been great to us. Um, Carl, people might be familiar with your original career uh, and I mean sporting career. You played football for us common in Bridges. Were you around the Bridges team that won the Club All-Ireland? Yeah, yeah, I was corner forward that day. Yeah, yeah. So that was that. Yeah, fantastic achievement. Um, I suppose we'd been knocking on the door for a couple of years before that, and uh, yeah, uh, yeah, that was that was a good week. So yeah, there there were great memories. Uh, that's not a bad sports career you put together. Like most people, kind of are happy enough with one of those two. But now, like, as an owner, you've managed to to win the lottery three times with this horse and uh, a club all Ireland type of thing. That you know, um, uh, famously, Gooch hasn't got one. No, yeah, yeah. Well, he got one in the no, end. No, in the end. It? Sorry, you're right. Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we had a fantastic team. Like, we had, like, players like Frankie Dolan, Seneca Bride, uh, Carl Mannion, Peter Dominican. Uh, we, you could Shane Kernan goal. Um, so, yeah, do you know, we had some fantastic players. Like, we were, most of our years when we were playing there, we were playing, like, inter-county teams as challenges and do good Dublin club teams. And so, do you know, it was a really good time to be playing football. Yeah. Uh, you, you played football where it was common as well for a, a couple of different stints. Yeah, so I would have played in 2009 and 2016. Um, yeah, lucky, delighted to play at Roscoven, but probably my pace uh, wasn't up to the standard of Intercounty. Uh, yeah, so I just, I probably found out a small bit with pace and injuries. But uh, yeah, delighted to be, you know, I played championship, um, played played Division 1 football and played Division 4. Never played 2 and 3. Wow. Yeah. Mm. So it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, it was great, yeah, yeah. But just probably that was my that was my you know limit out there just being like part of the panel and being able to come on every now and again. I'm sure the the, the context of all of this is that uh, you know Mayo fans are listening in and just hoping with the year that you've had that you're going to make a bold prediction for the All Ireland final. No, I I'd, I'd love to see I'd love to see uh, Mayo win. Um, it'd be great for um, the West of Ireland there, but Dublin just look like machines. Um, yeah, that game against um, in their semi-final, they just look like they're getting better. Um, so they're bringing in fellas there that are just, yeah, they're unbelievable footballers. Uh, yeah, just, I suppose, the uh, last guy for me on that. As an inter-county footballer, do you think it's sustainable? Um, the last lads, the counties like Roscommon, who 
with all due respect, at the moment, wouldn't really have a realistic chance of winning All-Ireland. And Roscommon are a lot better than a lot of teams. Is it sustainable that lads are going to train and give up so much of their lives for a goal that isn't actually achievable? Uh, yeah, see, so uh, Roscommon are kind of lucky in terms of, like, they've always been competitive enough in Connacht. Mm. And, like, you know, like, it's, it's not like, you know, that, like, every 10 years, Roscommon traditionally win a Connacht title. And, like, to win a Connacht title is, for Roscommon, is probably the All-Ireland, if you're mm. playing with Dublin or Kerry. So picking Roscommon and choosing it not to play for Roscommon because of that reason probably wouldn't, you know, as in like if you're playing with Westmead and I know they won in Leinster in the early 2000s or Longford but or Loud even, these kind of, you know, um, smaller teams, like very hard for them to like beat Dublin or be so uh, enthusiastic for the year forward knowing that like it's just going to be a formality really with Dublin. Yeah. Look, uh, it, unfortunately, it's turned into Kildare and Mead and, and most other teams as well when it comes to yeah. not having a chance. Um, how did you end up in, in Abu Dhabi? Is that, was that always part of the plan to go and see a bit of the world? Uh, yeah, so, well, first of all, I was come over with my wife, Eva. So she's from Langford. And uh, so come over with her and we were trying to, I suppose, get you know deposit for a house back home. Um, yeah, so, like, teachers are, I suppose, are paid slightly better out here but it's the perks that you get with the teaching out here which is like your free accommodation you get your uh, your bills paid for stuff like that so it gives you a better opportunity to kind of save money for a house down the line so that was the reason and yeah so traveled to um yeah sydney last year like it's a great it's a great place to go traveling like you're really you know close to everywhere and um, is the like what's the actual expat lifestyle like in abu dhabi yeah, it's very good very good too good um it's yeah it's it's nearly it's it's too hard to stay in at weekends out here and uh yeah as i said uh, the brunch has started like 12 o'clock um i don't know who said that was a good idea but um yeah there's a good uh, there's a good uh, expat um community out here there's like there's good risk common um um continuing out here as well like you would have like king conley would have played risk common out here scotty oates would have played risk common uh, sending kilbride i uh, you know, uh, Ken O'Malley, they were played Mayo. Like these are all good friends that I've met uh, um, from out here in um, uh, Abu Dhabi. All teaching as well. Yeah, all teaching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Teaching is um, it's a it's a difficult uh, job out here because uh, it's just their culture is slightly different. Um, yeah, and it's all private schools, and uh, yeah, so the behaviour issues out here in the classroom are quite challenging. I heard oh, yeah. I heard yeah. about that from teachers that like the they they the, the kids are like they're quite privileged and quite difficult. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, yeah, yeah. It's a big pressure now if you weren't passing your students. Like, um, yeah, no, to be to be quite wealthy, but they're you know they're they're respectful and you know they're very like you know they're very welcoming to the expats. Like, there's mm. I think there's eight million people expats living out here out ten. Like, so wow. yeah, yeah. It's very Western out here. Yeah. So like we have. We, like you have your bars, your restaurants, you have everything there, and then like we have a local racetrack here at Abu Dhabi, and then obviously the Maidan racetrack. I'm not sure if you've been there, but it's a uh, yeah, it's a sight to be seen now that racetrack. Um, the facilities obviously are world class in uh, like the whole kind of sports campus that they have there is uh, fairly ridiculous. And I remember having a look around there one time, and uh, the the money that is in Abu Dhabi is very hard to get your head around because. Um, you know, you're just looking at the sports cars. Everybody seems to have a sports car. Uh, and yeah. yet, obviously, there's, there's incredible poverty there, too. It's a, it's a really kind of um, very interesting part of the world to spend some time in. Now that you've kind of acclimatised to the life there, can you see yourself staying a bit longer? Yeah, so I'm on career break from um, Roscommon Community College. Loved my time there. Still there. Um, I'm on year three. So traditionally, you're allowed to get like five years. So I have another two years. And then I suppose myself and my wife will have you know, a decision to make whether... I go back, um, we go back to, to Ireland, or I go back uh, to save my job in Roscommon Community College, or I leave that and we stay out here. But yeah, no, we love it out here. Um, if I could get 10 years career break, we'd be doing 10 years. So it, nice. it's only that, yeah, it's the five years. But the plan is to, you know, save enough money for um, for a house. But it's got yes, keep doing what she's doing. She might be getting me out of a hole. <laughs> <laughs> you can have the brunch and the house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, how do you manage to recruit for a um, a syndicate from Abu Dhabi and keep up to, to date with all the kind of gossip and the news that you need to? No, so like it's actually, like it suits perfect out here. We're four hours ahead, so like just finished work and you come back and sure the racing's just starting on TV. 
so it's great like so you get the best of both worlds um yeah so no it's recruiting no problem like uh so kevin crane from wexford he's a you know, racing fanatic um and then he got his friend i've actually never met curl so Curl Sutton is from Wexford, never met him, only been on the phone to him, but he's Kevin's good friend. And then Kieran Breslin then from Donegal is out here, he's actually a very good footballer. And then Shark has then a mate back home called Mick Delaney, he's from Dublin. And so that's that's the that's the syndicate there. Uh, Mick is very good, he goes down to Shark's yard and sure he's sending out pictures uh, through the post out to us and sure he's, he's great Mick. So Sky Ace yes, and you've got a couple of others as well, is it this stage, how many have you got? Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, I have uh, four, four, um, yeah, so yeah, I'm running three, so Aoife's, my wife's uh, cousin is running another horse, um, Declan McDonald's from Dublin there, he's running another horse, and then I have, is I think it's seven or eight bartenders in New York in the syndicate with me, so I have a cousin, Connor McHugh, that's over him, uh, he's actually down in Florida now, but the, the rest of the lads are bartenders in New York, so yeah, they're summer horses, they're called uh, Balbeck and Poeta. But they're, they're, they'll be good ground horses, uh, they'll be summer horses. Right, and are they in Ireland, or the horses in Ireland? Yeah, right. Shark Hanlon has all three, four horses, yeah. Okay, so uh, teachers in Abu Dhabi, bartenders in Florida and New York and the horses in Ireland, and that's a truly global phenomenon. It seems to be going all right for you. Yeah, yeah, it's great. I'm uh, sure we have, like, WhatsApp calls. I'm training Shark here now the last couple of while. He wouldn't be the tech savvy, so I'm to get him to do voice notes and send them on to the boys, and... WhatsApp group calls and Zoom and sure he's loving it. Um, obviously you know it's great for his business too. Uh, he's getting in more customers. Um, yeah, I just don't understand how the big names don't really go with him or give him a chance as such. Like I know you have Michael Mead there. There's a great supporter of him and uh, Barry Connell was down the years. And uh, but yeah, he's a lot of syndicates and uh, yeah, no, he's. He's no question that he can train a horse anyway. Right, we're not going to see Sky Ace again now until Cheltenham. Is that right? Yeah, so she's going. She had eight races this year. So the plan was win, lose, or draw last uh, last week was to give her a rest. Um, she actually, I don't know much about it, but since her Down Royal race and her race in Punchtown, I think Shark said she might have put on maybe 40 kg, 45 kg. And he was saying that she was in super form and he was like worried about nearly getting her fit again that he had let her nearly go too, too long. So it just shows there how strong she gets with a bit with time off. So if she's able to improve another stone or half a stone between now and uh, Cheltenham, she goes there with a great chance. And she's only five, is that right? So like a long career, touch wood, injury permitting ahead of her. Yeah, so the plan was to go, you know, handicapping hurling this year and he was all this year on about uh, going chasing. And uh, so, you know, they, uh, but obviously now we're up with the good good mares in Ireland and uh, so we'll go to Cheltenham and we'll go to probably Punchtown or all the good uh, listed races in Ireland after um, after Cheltenham. Okay. And, and I just there to think it was Jody McGarvey is like gets on with her like a dream. Like what he like that re- that ride that he gave her in um Down Royal was you know phenomenal. And even the one in uh Punchtown, like he has been really, really good. Like he, he writes a message to me explaining you know how the race went, how he felt, give Shark good insight. You know, and then I can forward that on to the boys. So like we're getting a real, you know, uh, a feel for ownership. Like everyone is. So it's just not me. Like it's everyone in the syndicate. So it's great, great excitement. Yeah, I have no doubt. It's a it's a phenomenal story. And look, when you see Apple's Jade going for half a million, do you, when you know when the the rowdiness kicks off in the class, do you sit back and watch it and start dreaming half a million for Apple's Jade? Uh, we've a know? long way to go to Apple's uh, Jade now. Was form. She was um, a tremendous mare. She's up there with the likes of uh, Annie Power um, and these good mares. Um, so yeah, we're 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 still at the, the juvenile level. Um, you'd be hoping, you know, like the horse that won our race last year was the Manella Melody for Henry de Bromit, mm. and he won that race in Punchdown given no weight off level weights, and he went she went off a three to one for the mayor's novice race. And we win that race on Sunday, given lumps of weight to everyone on the bridle, and we were thirty three to one after the race. Now the thirty threes are gone, so oh, but she's sixteen to one. So you know if you're to take form like that and hoping that we'll improve, you know, she goes over a right real good chance. Well, I wish this show was recorded so that I could nip on and get a fiver each way on at 16 and see what happens. But listen, uh, it's a phenomenal story. Like, really, uh, one of those kind of, um, you know, you've got to pinch yourself when it when it's happening. And the best part about it is that you never know where it's going to take you. It could go on for years and years. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, actually, a good mate of mine uh, tweeted me there last week, and I I did an interview with Horse Race in Ireland, and it was like I was I explained that she trains terrible, and she was he was like uh, he's just like the owner, so our part owner. Um, so <laughs> yeah, so we never know. So yeah, so she's uh, she doesn't train well at all, and the one day that she trained well, or one week, she ran a stinker in Clarny. So we never know. She just brings us a track, but suppose he after the stage maybe. If she, Santa correct, but she didn't train too well either. And mm. she did famous high profile change from one trainer to another. Did I see a lot of parallels there? I don't know, maybe it's just a week oh, that's yeah. in it. There you, you go. Could getting, you could be getting the boys awfully excited now if we are comparing <laughs> ourselves to that as yet. That's our job in these, this this part. Carl, congratulations. It's an amazing story. And uh, you know, again, whenever the um race does go to post at Cheltenham, I think that you're gonna have a, a large portion of Ireland right behind you as well. Yeah, the support has been phenomenal. I mean, like, my Twitter has exploded. Now, I wouldn't be a good man for tweeting or anything like that, but my Twitter has, you know, with well wishes. So she's nearly like, you know, Princess Zoe, nearly like, you know, the people's horse. Everyone has just latched on to her. And I suppose, as she said earlier on, gives hope to other people, like, that they don't have to go and spend 100, 200,000. Like, that we'd never get into the game for that. We're hoping, like, you know, small money. And, I was and, just going to say, uh, Carl. She was, uh, she was the one that I completely forgot because probably referenced her before and there are that parallels that she's kind of nearly gone to the top of her <coughs> class and uh, I think exactly what you say there, like if if the National Hunt game is completely dominated by big owners, it won't be what it should be. We need stories like that and, you know, that's why you're on off the ball because it's a unique story. Yeah, yeah, no, it's been great. Like, and, you know, it's great for the boys there. Like, you know, they, it's their first horse now. I know... Uh, Karen has a bit more experience, but like it's, it's the two boys from Wexford, I think the first horse. I've had a few. Um, yeah, there's no better feeling, well, by winning the club all Ireland with your, with your club, mm. but uh, than winning, than having your horse winning and uh, whether you have money on or not, like it's just that trail, as you can see with that video, jumping around the place. The boys had a video earlier on in the year, going daft, like, so it's great, like, you know. Yeah, yeah, look, it's class. Carl, good stuff. We'll let you go back and enjoy the sunshine. Thanks a million. Yeah, Thanks, no Carl. matter, thank you. Oh, well, thank you. It's uh, Colm Q there, who's um, had a really brilliant sports career, it turns out. Uh, and uh, I look, I can only imagine what it must be like to have a great juvenile like that, where you do feel like you have three or four years of madness ahead of you. Yeah, like it's, you know, she could get badly injured in her next race. That's the reality of national race. But at the moment, as you said, she's young. And if she's a chaser, brought in this new race for Cheltenham as well. You know, the, the opportunities for these mares over fences are vast, really. And... Uh, it's just a great story, you know. I, I just if you if you look at the sales journey, you see that horse sold for six hundred quid, you immediately think there's a major hole because it just doesn't make sense. But it's sometimes the owner wants to sell. There might be a rumor at the sales, and uh, sometimes these do work out. You buy a horse for buttons, and I suppose the other thing is you're buying it off Willie Mullins, and the the concept then is that you can't improve a horse out of Willie Mullins. But that's it's not necessarily true. If the horse's ability, you can certainly get it to run well enough. And, um, you know, I, I I think it's just these stories are fantastic for National Hunt Racing and we need to spread the pie uh, in terms of the wealth as much as we can. Yeah, 100%. Uh, Friday Night Racing is brought to you by Horse Racing Ireland. If you have any uh, comments, you'd like to get in touch with us, uh, you can always get us on WhatsApp 87 180 during the uh, live bit or in the evening. You can text us at 53106 as well. Now, our 10 to follow. Chacun Poursois won at Cork last weekend for you, helping you maintain your lead over me in the uh, tote 10 to follow for the Irish Injured Jockeys Fund. But uh, I did pick up some points with Min, winning the John Durkin Memorial at Punchtown, although it wasn't enough to close the gap. The big shake-up in standing was obviously come at Christmas when my horses, who, you know, I've, mm. been, I've been waiting for them, I've been placing them carefully. Uh, many of the big names we picked are set to take the field. Christmas will obviously also see tote sponsor the first race on St. Stephen's Day at Leopardstown. To keep up with the latest tote and tend to follow news, visit tote.ie. We did want to talk about um, the big race at Cheltenham tomorrow, 3 o'clock. Indeed, yeah. Christmas Christmas definitely going to be big for our little rivalry there because, um, you know, all those big races at Leopardstown. Yeah, um, I don't know, Ger, if you remember Goshen running in the Triumph Hurdle last year, he was probably 10 or 12 lengths clear when he... I mean, it was just... 
You sent off five two favourites, and if you had backed him, I mean, I, I don't know what you say really, but he he had a very very kind of bizarre unseat at the last of Jamie Moore when he was miles clear, and he looked, you know, you're like, oh my god, this horse could be could be anything, even though he was only a four year old. Anyway, he's run twice on the flat since. He's been sent off very short prices. Hasn't really had any excuses, um, you know, but I, I wouldn't read too much into that because I think he's just not a flat horse. Um, but he's out tomorrow to. I, only redeem his reputation but show that he's still on track he's going to go off favourite but uh, I like So Royale in the race you know he's as solid as the days long second debutant last time that race is a bit of a mess from the fight in fifth strong travelling horse whose best form would have him bang there uh, that's the three o'clock at Cheltenham tomorrow quiet weekend in Ireland just the one meeting tomorrow um, it's uh, keep an eye on Peckham Springs at uh, in the Irish, in one, well, I think it's the first race actually tomorrow at Fairy House, Peckham Springs, of course, with referencing a Noni Fools and Horses episode, but I think it's a good each way chance. All right, good stuff. We're in full on Christmas preview mode next week with a two hour special for you on Friday Night Racing. It's a stack lineup. We'll be getting all the hottest tips and updates from the yards of Joseph O'Brien and Henry de Bromhead. On your Connor and Patrick Mullins and Barry Gardy will also tell us what Christmas racing is all about. And uh, in the first two cases, their book of rides. And obviously, we'll get Barry's thoughts about some of the big races that are coming as well and what it takes to win over the festive period. That's coming your way next Friday the 18th from 8 o'clock to 10 p.m. If you have anything that you'd like to raise with uh, any of those as well, tweet us at Off The Ball. Is there anything else from you, Johnny, that you want to uh, mention? No, not much. Um, good uh, good old card at Dundalk tonight. Um, I think, uh, I suppose the thing is, with with things developing as they are, will the lads be able to go to Cheltenham to watch the mayor? I think that's the big question. I'd be very hopeful that we're on the we're on the right path globally and uh, I think um, people come out of Christmas in a kind of in a more hopeful place. It's it's been a, it's just been a mad year. I think uh, one thing for me is I've completely lost concept of time. There was, like we did something earlier on in the year in terms of a League of Ireland show that we had and it honestly feels like two or three years ago when it was put to me today, yeah, that was back in what, February or something. It was just like, geez, that that seems like ages ago. But uh yeah, hopefully some normality. Hopefully I'll be back in the office soon as well. And uh yeah, is there any any old Christmas drinks going on at them? I don't think so. Mm. <laughs> I don't think so. They're like no, I mean not, not even virtually. But I mean Kay Burley got suspended for six months for having some Christmas drinks, so you know. <laughs> yeah. So you well, get a, in Ireland, they don't care about that kind of stuff, uh, as we saw with our own version of the K Burley stuff. It's like, nah, no one cares. Turns out yeah. we're, we're a different breed. You're right. not ruling it out. That is it. That is uh, Friday Night Racing and Off the Ball, brought to you by Horse Racing Ireland. Love every racing moment. Visit hri.ie and maybe we'll do those next Friday. We will be celebrating that. Johnny, you will be in studio for that one. So we'll see you then. Take care. Friday Night Racing on Off the Ball. Uh, Brought to you by Horse Racing Ireland. Love every racing moment. Visit hri.ie.